guys? Welcome back once again. It is me, Molt. So happy to be here with you guys today. This week has been awesome so far with all the update uh, sneak peeks and everything that has come out. <clears throat> we found out that we have a fourth mortar, so everybody's got to change their bases. And you know me as a base builder because that's what I've done for so long on my channel. Some of my most popular videos are base builds. Uh, my Hurricane base design is probably the most popular Town Hall 8 base that I've ever made. Um, it was super popular for a long time, but now we have four mortars, so we got to change it up and we got to make <clears throat> some new ones. So today we're going to be doing a Town Hall 8 trophy base with uh, four mortars, obviously, and the skeleton traps. Um, and my whole goal in this is to kind of teach you guys that have lower level bases. I guess Town Hall 8 isn't really that lower level, um, but it's not Town Hall 10, it's not Town Hall 9, uh, which is when you got get a lot of things like Expos and Inferno. So Town Hall 8 is probably one of the more popular of Town Halls. Uh, it was definitely one of my favorites. So what I'm going to be doing today is kind of explaining to you guys uh, my process when it goes into designing a base, and hopefully you guys can incorporate it into your base builds as well, because you don't always want to just copy someone else's base because it's fun to make your own. So we're going to go ahead and bring in all four of the mortars. Uh, one of my mortars is sadly only level one. It's upgrading to level two right now. I don't gym on this account at all, so you will never see any gymming on this unless I get it from removing uh, shrubberies, etc., etc. So we're going to bring in all the all, all of the uh, mortars right here. You can see that they cover uh, practically the entire base. Uh, this one right here would be about would be that range right there. So you can see how much that covers. So we're looking good there. And now, guys, I used to always say to centralize your clan castle, but things have changed with these skeleton traps. So we have two skeleton traps right up here. Both of them are level two. Um, we can go, I guess I can't go into the info on this so we can't see the tabs, but we'll go into that after this. So those pretty much work as another secondary clan castle. So I'm going to bring this one clan castle over here uh, on the side, and then we're going to have the traps over here as well. So it kind of, I, either side they attack from, there are going to be troops that are going to be distracting them from um, clan castle or skeleton traps. So that's what we're doing there. Let's go ahead and bring our, uh, we're going to bring in one of our uh, air defenses. I'm sorry, I just sounded like a noob. We're going to bring in this air defense right here, and then we're going to bring in our other two air defenses. We're going to put one of them right here and one of them right here. Uh, I'm actually going to put this one right here. So we've got a pretty good coverage of the base when it comes to our air defenses. Um I'm, I'm not really too worried about getting attacked by too much air defense at Town Hall 8. I normally don't see that. It's normally ground attacks. Um, so I don't put as much priority on those as I do, say, Wizard Towers or Mortars. Mortars most definitely because people are going to be attacking with Barch and stuff like that, and you want to be able to defend it as best as possible. So even though this is a trophy base, I do still want to protect some of my resources so that I can continue upgrading the base. So we're going to put some of these resources in here. I'm definitely going to be protecting my Dark Elixir so that I can upgrade my King and whatnot we are going to bring in uh, some archer towers into the middle of the base to also help with air defense archer towers are a great defense to not only defend air but also to defend your air defenses so you can see um, both of these air defenses right here and right here or all three of them are in range of these archer towers so if an air unit is attacking the air defense then we're going to have our archer towers attacking that air unit to kind of help protect it a little bit so that's why those are in the middle. That's why I have them where they are right now. Let's go ahead and bring in our Wizards, which are by far my favorite troop in the game. My favorite troop, my favorite defense in the game. We're going to bring in all of these, and then we're going to bring in some resources uh, to help protect those. And next, we're just going to bring in a couple of cannons right in here in the middle. They are two layers back, so they're protected pretty well. Now, you might be wondering why this little gap is right here and why I didn't just bring this straight over. Well, if I had brought it straight over and connected it right here, then if somebody attacked with wall breakers right there, they would also get into this little portion where this air defense is. So it's very important not to have three walls next to each other because a wall breaker will attack a corner and attack and damage all three of the things. So if you move it one more over and it's four over, 
uh, then the wall breaker is not going to be able to get into that storage. So if I had connected this right down here, then they would have been able to do so. So that's why I spread those out like that. That's why that extra room is in there. Let's go ahead and bring in the rest of our defenses. So we're going to bring one cannon right up here, and then we're going to bring one archer tower right up here to help protect our mortar that is only a level 2 or upgrading to level 2, um, and also just to protect the top portion of the base. Uh, since we've got three wizards down here, uh, and we don't have any up top, that's why all of my Teslas are up at the top, so that they can help protect the base uh, evenly. So we got wizards at the bottom, Teslas at the top, so on and so forth. So we're going to go ahead and bring in the rest of our buildings. Again, you can see that these are one level back because if somebody attacks right here, they are not going to get into this compartment. Otherwise, they would have. So that's why that is right there. We can go ahead and bring in this cannon right here and this as well. <clears throat> and we have a spring trap right here to spring anybody out. And we don't have any bombs next to it, uh, like right next to it. We have one over here because someone's going to get sprung off and then they're going to get damaged. And then the other troops are going to get damaged by the bomb. So it's very important to do is not put bombs in front of spring traps because if you damage something 50% and then knock it away, you wasted your spring tap trap because that troop would have died from defenses anyway. So you want to make sure that you get rid of troops and then damage them, not damage them and then get rid of them because it's a waste of one of your defenses. So... We'll continue on bringing in the rest of our stuff. We're going to bring in these two uh, <coughs> air defenses, <laughs> not air defenses, archer towers down here. And the archer towers are protecting the air defenses once again. So I always do that with my bases because I want my air defenses to be, be protected from the archer towers um, or with by the archer towers just to help out with uh, some extra air because we only have a couple of defenses that protect air. Um, only so we're gonna put those in there and let's go ahead and bring in the rest of these buildings So we're gonna bring in our spell factory right here We're gonna put our king right over here, and then we're gonna put this guy right here And we just have two of these random buildings In here as well, and then we can save that village and you can see uh, that I've got probably an interesting uh, army comp trained up some giants some archers and some goblins um, but I hope that you guys have enjoyed this again you can go ahead we can come in here and we can go to info and see that three are gonna spawn so that's gonna be six troops that are gonna come out of there and distract so as they come out of there and get distracted as they are pulled out then we are going to have our archer towers and our mortars you can see uh, almost all of them this one would cover the the traps over there when those come out the mortars are going to be wrecking whatever is attacking the skeleton. So that's going to be great for us. I think this base is going to work really, really well because we have a couple layers of walls to the town hall. So one, two, and three in. One, two, and three. One, two, three. All the way around. So the town hall is going to be, be protected very, very well. So I'm excited for that. But this is really just to help you guys understand that it's not all about attacking but also defending in this game defending and having a very good base design is super super important obviously i haven't seen this base in action because i am creating it live for you guys right now um but otherwise i hope that you guys enjoyed definitely look out for some more lower level town hall 8 town hall 7 uh strategies from me molt i will be providing ways to efficiently farm so that you make the most for your elixir and your gold that you use searching and um, training up troops and just effectively taking advantage of everything you have when it comes to boosting barracks and things of that sort. But this is the new uh, Town Hall 8 base design that I've made that has four mortars in it and skeleton traps in the defense. So super excited about it. Let me know what you guys think below. And as always, make sure you keep calm and clash on for me, all right? I'll see you guys later.